pop rocking, y'all. Welcome to Pop Lock Talk. What y'all know about this jam right here? The intruders. Cowboys to girls. Hey, he says some cold shit in this song. Y'all see what y'all women do to us? Listen what this cat is saying. He said, my whole life has been re <laughs> rearranged. Boy, y'all messed our heads up with that. Mm. I'm bumping this man because I'm a low rider. And this is the kind of shit I bump when I low ride. Listen to what this dude is saying. I'm a grown up man. Girls are made for kissing. He didn't know what he was missing. Life ain't the same. My whole life has been rearranged. You see what y'all ladies do with us, man? Mess our heads up. Hey, check this out. I'm staying banging on Pop Lock Talk today. I know y'all see my Mustang Club out there, man. We staying banging. I'm the president of the car club. Fox Bodies 5.0s. Staying banging. Mad horses all day. Y'all see us on the lowrider set. You know what I'm saying? Mine's is the burgundy one with the burgundy flannel at the bottom. <laughs> Man, by the way, speaking of my car club, y'all, I came in third place in my first car. My car, first time I put my Mustang in a car competition, I came in third. Let me share with y'all, man, about this because I'm a little sensitive about the situation. The reason why I lost. It was this dude. It was a 90s. They put me in the 90s category, right? The dude had a truck, a blazer. He turned his music on and his shit was sobbing. Everybody went around his car, went around his truck and was standing around and just listening, knocking to it and jamming with him, right? I believe that's the only reason why he got me. So guess what I did? I put my shit in the shop and now my shit is earthquaking. So next year, I'm going back to the same car. Uh, no diss to the car, man. I, uh, SoCal, this was in Temecula, uh, Pachanga. We came in third, and then as a car club, as a car club, look, I got, I got plaques. They gave us top five club participation. Give it up for us. Where's my fake applaud at? Can I get my fake applaud? Okay. Oh, yeah. So... When you come down to Cool Boys Boxing Camp and Dance Academy, you'll see this right here. You'll know why this is on my wall. You'll know why this is on my wall. But anyway, um, check this out, y'all. I got my first sponsor. I got my first sponsor, man. Uh, Mocha Mama Skin Care. She hooked me up. My first sponsor on Pop Lock Talk. This is cool. This is cool, y'all. Check this out. Booyah. She brought me... Aid beer butter. Now I, I ain't gonna lie, I haven't I haven't gave it a shot yet. I'm gonna test it out though. I'm gonna put it on my beer. But she said it's bomb. Can y'all see that? Let me see. Let me get a good angle on it. Oh shit, man, the light is. God damn it. Well, here I'll tell y'all what. I'm gonna read what it say. <clears throat> Let me do my commercial shit. Let me put on my commercial voice for y'all. Mocha Mama, made with shea butter, mango butter, castor oil, coconut oil, vitamin E oil, and fragrance nice hey y'all can check her out at uh www.mochamamaskskincare.com y'all go check my mocha mama out i'm gonna go ahead and give this beard butter put it on my shit and next time on the next pop lock talk y'all see how my shit looking silky then you know why hey and she also got this a body butter right here to make your body feel silky it's say made with uh, shea butter, mango, butter, olive oil, coconut oil, 
Oh man, this is cracking too. She said, this is killing right here. She said, this is her lead sing uh, seller right here. So y'all look out for Mocha Mama. Uh, it's a black owned business, you know. So uh, support her. She's on Pop Lock Talk. Hey Mocha Mama, I told you I got your back. Boom, boom. So, hey, today on Pop Lock Talk is going down. It's going down. I got the homie Megatron. Megatron is in the building. I'm going to bring him in. I'm going to bring Megatron in right now. We finna interview this cat. Let's get ready for it. Let's get ready for Megatron. Booyah! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Pop Lock Talk. Man, and today we got the homie. Coming straight out from where? Boston Mass, brother. Boston, the East Coast. The East Coast. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Tell him your name. Megatron, you know what I mean? OG Megatron, the mighty Megatron, you know what I mean? Been repping Boston since 77, bruh. Seventy-seven. So what I'm age? Old, baby. What age were you in seventy-seven, man? Eleven. Eleven years old. You've been getting Eleven. down. You've been getting down since seventy-seven. So, who got you started, man? Well, actually, um, you know, um, I basically watched a lot of, a lot of Soul Train, a lot of like, you know, uh dancers from the west coast out there with all you guys getting busy and stuff like that and uh, uh i took a liking to you know mr penguin back then one of the lockers So no one taught no. you. No one no. brought this dance to you. No one. So you know what, man? I'm more impressed with that versus someone sharing a story saying, hey, man, such and such came and got me and taught me how to do this dance. This right. dance naturally grabbed your attention. You picked yeah. it up on your own. Absolutely. So you started locking first because you saw. You first. You know what I'm saying? Um, you saw Penguin, I, you know, a.k.a. I like, Rerun. I like, yeah, I like the fact that, you know, he was a big dude getting busy because I was kind of a big dude back then, so I thought. And um, I was like, you know what? Damn, if his big behind could do that, man, I know I could do that shit. <laughs> so, so I was just trying it, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. then, uh, my cousin just like, yo, man, you good, man. And I was like, man, I, I, mean, I really didn't see it at the time. But we used to go to like a lot of block parties and things like that. And um, get busy in the circle. You know what I'm saying? And that was it. So this is in 77? 77, 78, man. So you were locking first? First. And then what did you go into? Um, From locking, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I really enjoyed it. And then my cousin, he came from uh, Florida. He was like, yo, man, they're, they're waving out there, man. They're waving. I'm like, oh, really? So I was like, oh, okay, that's what's up. So wait a minute, wait a minute. He Your cousin you. came from Florida and said they were waving in Florida? Yes. In the 70s? In 70, 79. So you actually had a relative from Florida that came down and said he was waving in Florida? This is what he said. He said that he was in California. Okay. But they were waving in uh in Florida. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh snap. 
I said, let me see what that is. Yeah. So he was showing, you know what I'm saying, all kind of crazy different waves and stuff like that. You know, all the trace waves back then and all that crazy stuff. And I was just like, damn, that shit's bad as hell. He didn't show me none of the popping aspects of it, right? I had to, I had to see that for myself from when the locking part, right? And, uh, when he came to me and he was like, yo, you know what I mean? You ought to hit with that. And I was like, oh, okay. So I like that feel. That's pretty slick. That's pretty cool. And then, you know, Wayne was like my first love at first. You know what I mean? But then as the years went by, I started like hitting. You know what I mean? You guys call it banging. You know what I mean? And I uh, started hitting. And then from the hitting aspect, I started mixing, you know? So no, we it say, was never like one stop. We say banging. We me. say hitting. We say hitting too. You know? Yeah. Um, I'm impressed with that, man. Uh, so at this point, man, where you guys, what crew were you from? Well, um, I wasn't even in a crew yet. And um, I say like around 79, I got up my first crew, which was called Cosmic Reaction. And it was like about seven to eight different people with one girl in the group. You know what I mean? And um, we didn't really have a lot of routines or nothing, but like solos, we were really nasty together. And um, the group lasted for like about six, seven months. And um, then after that, I was doing like a lot of like uh, dancing out in the street. You know what I mean? Um, we used to call it rocking back then. A lot of cats nowadays call it hitting. But we did a lot of that stuff out in the street and just kept getting busy. So this but is at that time. This is Boston, uh, right? This is Boston. Okay. So <clears throat> during that time, there was also dudes calling you out to battle all the time, too. So they see you out in the street. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, yeah, it's on. What, what do you want to do? And I'm like, yeah, let's get it. Get over there. So it was always battle time, mostly. So, who was one of the first dudes that you seen getting down in Boston? One of the first cats that I thought was nice? Yeah. I'm going to have to say, well, I always liked Billy and Bobby, first of all. You know what I'm saying? The, the twins, they were always like my two favorites because the, the cats were like, their unison together was always dope. But as like a solo, solo cats, there was this one cat, his name was Daryl, and um, he had a real unique hitting and gliding style. You know what I mean? Like he'd hit and stutter glide, like, you know what I mean? And um, he was very unique. God rest his soul, man. Mm. He was a beast. What's his name? One, one of the first I've seen. Okay, let's, uh, anytime someone passed away, man, I used to get down, we give him five seconds yeah. of pop lock love. We put our head down for him, man. Five. Gotcha. Five. Three, two, one. Pop lock love to that cat, man. Pop lock love, absolutely, man. Yeah. And um he was one of he was one of the most unique cats. Like, if he was still around today, dudes would be like, yo, I never seen no style like that. You know what I mean? So he was different. Hey, so tell me, man, what was the relationship like between you and the twins, Billy and Bob? Oh man, I'm like my brothers. You know what I mean? Like that's family right there. Um, their group, the Funk Effects, was like renowned in Boston. Like yo, uh, when it came to like routines, mm. shows, um, stage shows, and stuff like that, they were kind of they almost kind of remind me of Demons of the Mind at, at first. A okay, little bit. okay. But with like a funkier like flair, like. Like, Demons of the Minds had crazy costumes and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the Funk Effects, they had nasty costumes, too. But their whole stage show was built around, like, some weird shit. <laughs> like, it yeah. was just crazy. So when you go in there and you're watching this show, it's kind of like you're watching a movie. Yeah. It, was, it was different. You know what I mean? Now, I don't want to assume anything because of your name. So I'm just going to ask you this question. 
What yep. style do you represent? I would have to say I kind of represent the East Coast electric boogie style. Um, I I pretty much love the West Coast styles, all the different styles. You know what I'm saying? Like the bopping, uh, the pop locking aspect that you guys represent. Uh, my style is kind of like a mixture of all. Only different only difference with me is is that I try to like stay as an animated character. You know what I mean? So the whole Megatron thing is more like an angry robot sometimes. Uh, angry robot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. give, give me give me an example of an angry robot. Is that aggression? What? It's kinda like um it's kinda like a lot of like quickness and at the same time crazy animations and stuff and then at the same time it's like some glides and then like really fierce robotics you know okay i see that in so you. i see that in you. yeah so yeah so so what have you like done let me, let me ask you this man what have you done with the dance that you're most proud of well i'll be honest with you man you know what I mean? I'm most proud of uh, co-creating Slaughterhouse. You know what I mean? There's a Slaughterhouse Kings, Slaughterhouse Poppin' Sessions that uh, Shallow and I created um, back in 2004. Sonia. Well, we got through getting busy representing for the almighty Slaughterhouse Kings. Listen, we got busy tonight, put in a lot of work, and we represented to the fullest. Slaughterhouse is one of Boston's number one popping scenes or popping emporiums right here in the city. We try to make sure that popping could stay consistent right here in Boston. We do a lot of teaching on Saturdays. We teach all kinds of facets of popping, from battling to being able to have stage presence to being able to you know grow a career. So come down, represent yourself, come take some classes. We have multiple packages for you to come and learn, but it's up to you to be dedicated. That's what it's all about. It's your boy Megatron, representing Starter House to the fullest degree. This is how we get busy, right here in Boston, Mass. Yo, that's what it's all about. Peace. You know what I mean? And we had a lot of students that came out that ended up battling cats all over the country and all over the, uh, all over the place, you know? And, um... I'm, I'm most proud of that because a lot of people don't give back to the community. Like cats like you and myself, we give back to the community and let the, let people know that this is what we do. This is this is how we show our love and appreciation of how the community blessed us with, you know what I'm saying, with the love of the talent that we have, you know? I love that. So, I love that about you, man. Um, I noticed that. I watched your clips. I've seen you involved with the youth. Uh, and yes, that's something we have in common. You're you're entrenched with that, you know. I, yeah, man, I see, thank you. yeah, you 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 really love. It's a passion of yours. And not only that, I could tell you're good at it. I see the kids how they they love you, you know. Uh, <laughs> so that's cool, yeah, man. Yeah, see, I do it too, man. With the hands. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, yeah. We rumble, we dance, we do it all down here, yeah. man. Roller skate. Um, see, that's the thing. See, a lot of people don't do stuff like that no more. Yeah. Like, a lot of cats always, like, worry about themselves. But they got to understand, your hood is what made you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's where that's where you got your notoriety of who you are. Yeah. So you have to give that back and say, let me see if this little kid got what it takes to be another, you know what I'm saying, cool boy or a Megatron or so on and so forth. You yeah. know what I mean? So you got to give that love and give that chance mm -hmm. for them kids to be able to grow like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. How'd you get your name? Ah, that's bad funny right there, yo. I tell people this story, and it's kind of it's kind of crazy as hell. Um, I used to like Daryl Dawkins a long time ago. Ooh, right? absolutely. Rest in right? peace, Daryl Dawkins. Now he used to talk about this planet called Lovetron, right? So I used to wear a hat just like you got on your head right now. Yeah. But it was Terry Claw. 
and it used to say Love Tron on it. Okay. And um, I used to get down at these block parties and stuff like that, and the Love was in the front and the Tron was on the back. Okay. So um, I got busy at this block party. So the next day, my cousin and I, we went downtown Boston to chill, and this girl was screaming, Yo, Tron! Yo, Tron! From a distance. Yeah. I didn't know ran up to me and she said, yo, I saw you last night, Tron. You was getting busy. And then uh, she gave me the name Tron. And then after a while, through like a lot of battles and stuff like that, it became Megatron. That's dope. That's dope. Who was one of your hardest battles, man? Ooh, man. Um, I'm going to say this cat, his name was Joe Rock. You know what I mean? He had like illusionary shit. <laughs> now, where, where was Joe Rock from? Joe Rock was from um, he was from Jamaica Plain. It's a part of Boston over there where there's a lot of projects and shit. So he um he pretty much was was a tough cat to beat. Like you know what I'm saying? Now, I how far back up, are we going? Up. How far back are we going? What year are you talking about here? Oh shit, man! This is like eighty, exactly Ooh. eighty. This is nineteen eighty, man. Um, we used to do a lot of talent shows here in Boston, and after the talent show, cats would be in a cipher battling. And the very first time, he called me out. I I I I went up against him. We went for like hours, you know, like the first person to quit is the loser. You know what I mean? So we never quit, neither one of us. But they was kicking everybody out. So they're like, yo, everybody got a jet. So then the next time I saw him was kind of like a disadvantage for him because he came to uh, where Billy and Bobby, that their headquarters is at, which is a place called the Lee School in Dorchester. Okay. So they had a talent show there, and he came to, uh, to perform in it. But I, I'm, I was already, I'm always ready. I'm like, yo, whenever I see somebody, let's get it. If they want to get it, come get it. And um, he was there, and we went at it again. You know what I'm saying? Good 45 minutes, maybe an hour straight. Man. Yeah, man. Dudes never gave up back then, man. But what? the one thing about battling back then, you can't repeat shit. You know what I'm saying? You can't repeat shit. You can't keep doing the same fucking whack styles. You can't, uh, you can't sit there and be like, so if you did tutting, right, in a sequence, right, you can't do that same shit no more. It's a wrap. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep creating all the time. So that's why I got him at. You know what I'm saying? I, I stayed on like some old high level creative there shit. There you go. He was on some, yeah, he was on go. some old, Okay, I'm going to do this again on him. Like, people didn't see that shit the first time. Nah, nigga, let's go. Come on, man. You got you can't keep doing that shit. Is there anybody that you would like to battle today? Woo, wee, that's a great question, homie. You know that? That's a good question. Uh, I respect a lot of cats, man. You know what I'm saying? But just to test my skill set, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm 57, man. You know what I mean? So I'd like to test my skill set against an OG, though. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to battle a young dude. You know what I mean? I want to battle. If I'm going to battle somebody, I'd rather battle an older cat. But if that was to happen, and who I would have to battle, who I would want to battle, man, I would battle. I would battle. I wouldn't mind battling like. There's so many cats on the West Coast that I think's nice, man. That I'd like to try. <laughs> Give me two names. Yeah. Scorpio's one. Woo, Scorpio! Megatron want to come get you. Megatron want to come. <laughs> Megatron just called you out on Pop Lock Talk. Uh oh. oh here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Give me another name. Uh, let me see. Um, damn. But There's you know what? That's giving like props. That. That's giving props to Scorpio. That's saying, hey. He's so dope. Yeah, I want to battle somebody with skills. And Scorpio most definitely is, he's hes hes a G at Pop Locking from L.A. Listen, yeah. he's a, man, listen, 
And like, I watch a lot of these dudes, man, and I and I say to myself, they carry that OG torch real strong, man. You know what I'm saying? And like, I I still think today a lot of these young cats can't even fuck with them. To me, to me, it's probably because I respect the OG banner so much that you would have to actually like. Beat the shit out of one of them OGs, man. And, I, and like these young cats, I don't see that. I don't see it in them. Give me one more name. You ain't getting away with this. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, damn. I fucks with Dre heavy too, man. Bop and Andre. Yes, sir. I fucked with him heavy too. Um, there's another cat that uh. Oh man, you know who else is real nasty? I just want to, I just want to, I just want to battle him just because he's fucking dope to me. Who is that? It's, it's motherfucking Daryl Stokes, man. Ooh. Ooh. That nigga's waves is vicious, son. Yeah. Yeah. Vicious. Yeah. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Like that's Pomona right there. If you're gonna battle, through, if you're gonna battle somebody, you gotta battle someone who's fucking fierce, man. Yeah. And yeah. these kids don't battle fierce motherfuckers. Yeah, you gotta. You, fierce come from. Fierce come from. Let me ask you this. Did you play sports when you was a kid? Of course. What sports did you play? Football, basketball, uh -oh. baseball. Oh shit! Which one was your favorite? Oh shit! Football. Oh yeah. What position you play, man? Let me guess. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You oh, already. Shit. You already got it off. You already got it off. Just that one? Yeah. Just that one position? Yeah, that's me. That was me. Okay. That's where yeah. that's what gets you fierce. When, no you, when, you, when you come from childhood and playing ball like that, that's where you get it in you from, you know? Absolutely, because that's a contact sport. It's a physical. Yeah. It, yeah. It's physical. You have to be able to take physicality mm -hmm. to also a mental game. Yeah. Popping to me is a mental game. It's where you have to think, outthink your opponent sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, there's times, I'm not saying I never lost. What I'm saying is, is that who's going to outthink who that day? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's that's my thing. Who's going to outthink who that day, man? Yeah. You know what I mean? The smartest. That's all. Who the funk is that day? That's it. Hey man, describe your style of clothing that you like to get out in. Being from the East Coast, that'd be interesting to me. Yeah, well, because I seen a dude um, popping in some Timberlands before, and to me, that's wild. I'm like, whoa, that's crazy, huh? His feet gotta be hurt. That's and he was, wild. but he was fucking it up too. I'm like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I need something light on my feet. That's why I get out in Chucks, you know, or Cortez. I know, I see. Yeah, yo, man. I'm going to answer your question in a second, right, about the clothing. But I want to say something about your gear. You be shining, boy. Oh, thank you, homie. You be shining in your shit. Thank you, homie. Like, uh, like every time I see you, you have not only a, 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 a real funky get-together, like, color scheme going, but I think you have, like, Great coordination with your gear all the way down from top to bottom, from the hat down to the chucks. But uh, lesson number one, keep a strap. Lesson number two, never break. Lesson number three, fuck the internet. Can't slide through if you ain't from them jets. How to survive in the bay, man. You got to stay out the way, man. You got to know how to wiggle and get up out of the pickle. You got to play your position. Too many cooks in the kitchen. Too many craps in the buckets. You got to check better tuck. I don't know what's where it's wicked. Bitches got more game than niggas. They'll line you up for the... And it's like, a lot of people don't take the time to showcase their gear. Hmm. Like, you see a lot of these poppers out here, man, they just wear any old thing. Something dirty, filthy jeans, or whatever the case it is. You know, you know, Megatron, I come from that era, man. You know, when I watched the lockers, being a kid, yeah. their outfits, their attire was a Absolutely. representation of them. And, you know, before Don Campbellot passed, he had a talk with me. I'm not going to say no names. But one day he said, hey, man, one of your partners in your crew 
he need to tighten up. And I was like, what you talking about? And he was like, his get down. Yeah. He said, cool yeah. boy, even though you look good, he need to get it together too, or it makes all y'all look bad. And this is coming from Don That's Camelot. So I've learned, homie, from the big homies. They schooled me. Yeah. You know, it's always been in me to want to look tight, man, because I watched my father every morning put on a suit, and he was proud of yeah. how he dressed. You know, if you had on something else yeah. other than a suit, you was tacky or you wasn't dressed. You, you ain't sharp unless you have on a suit. That was his mentality back then. And the word was, I'm clean. <laughs> I'm clean. Woo, he clean. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I appreciate your compliment, homie. Thank you. Yeah, man, because real recognize real, man. And I, I, I look at it from this standpoint where um, if you're not dress the part what part are you representing you know what i mean but to answer your question man uh i like to wear a sweatsuit like a hoodie or something um sometimes i like long sleeve um, shirts you know what i mean i never wear short sleeves really even when I, even when i was out even when i come out to cali man i'm wearing long sleeves man I because can't help it. that's a part of making your waves look absolutely dog Absolutely. See, come on, man. I ain't got to tell you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's helped with the illusion, you know what I'm saying, of it. You know what I mean? So it's uh, it's about the way you dress and the way you carry yourself, man. That's right. You know what I mean? And it's not just that, you know what I'm saying? If anything, you know, back in the day, we used to you know, make sure we was clean for the chicks, you know? Yeah. We used to make sure we looked good when we was dancing for the women. We used to make sure we look good for our own personal reasons, you know what I mean? And it was it was always and that's now you guys are in Cali and we're all the way over here on the east coast of Boston and we felt the same way. We felt the same way. You know what I mean? If you're not dressed for the for the occasion, man, then I don't know what you're here for. Hey, are you a Patriot fan? Absolutely. Okay, so I seen some footage of you busting in a jersey. You had your your patriot, you had your patriot jersey out, man. You was getting down, homie. Yeah, Thank you, you know what clip I'm talking about? Um, it's either one because I wore it twice. One was outside, and one was inside at a uh, at a dispensary. Okay. Uh. Um, I would have to say the one in the dispensary was a was a better get down. The one when I was outside, I was doing something with Shallow that time. And I felt as though I didn't really represent that day. Who am I screwed? Let's get the phone down. Here you want me up. Let's break out. Let me talk to you like what is not going to fall for you. Uh. <laughs> Original move! Original move! Let's get the ball down. Here you want me up. Let's break out. Let me talk with you. Hey, yeah. you know? mm -hmm. hey man, uh, I see, I see you. You know, I know you're doing the slaughterhouse thing, and uh, I truly admire that a lot. But one particular video really grabbed me, and the reason why it grabbed me, it was heartfelt because uh, the way I took it, it was 
you and a young lady were dancing together and mm. you were you were tutting and you weren't going hard it, it was almost like hey i want her to have the shine the, absolutely the way i took it was you were passing on your style to this young lady am i right or wrong and, and she was a young little black girl and then when you when you finished getting down you passed it to her she went to town with it <laughs> You're right. That's my student. Her name is Alana Pops. Tell me about that relation, man, and how that got started and why you took her under your wing and why you given her that gift of your style like that. Because I know you don't pass it to anybody because it looked like you was taking your time to give it to her. I, I did, man. You, you, you have really good reception right there because that's exactly what I was doing, man, because I taught her ever since she was seven years old. Oh, that's yeah, your, man. That's, your, that's your baby. That's your baby. That's yeah, your child. She's, she's 23 now. Wow. So is she and, uh, is she going around battling? Yeah, she battles all the time. She battles. She she travels. Uh, she just came back from a European tour with the weekend. Mm -hmm. And she she does a lot of traveling. You know what I'm saying? Um, on stage and stuff like that with artists. And she also she also jumps in that battle circuit all the time too. You know what I mean? She loves that a lot. And um, you know, she's another one that's like, whenever she's getting on the floor, she has to be pretty. She got to be like, <laughs> dressed, dressed yeah. like, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going out there without no makeup on. Yeah. I'm not going out there with my hair done. Yeah. I, when I'm battling, I want you to understand that I'm a sexy broad that's going to yeah. be getting it in. You yeah, know what I, mean? I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, yeah. You know, man, I have, yeah. I have mentors in different genres of things, and all my mentors, I looked up to, I watched their style. Like for an example, I'm going I'm to tell you people that I admired, man. I always loved Morris Day. Oh, of course. I thought Morris Day was the coldest, homie. You yes. know, I used to go, I used to go to school with my baggies on thinking I was Morris Day, dancing like him, acting like him, <laughs> wearing, hey, hey, for my, for my uh, seventh grade uh, graduation, my eighth grade graduation, my uncle had got us a limousine, right? I was yeah. wearing my coat over my shoulders, but didn't put my arms in the sleeves. I was just wearing them. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I was more as day. <laughs> I swear I was more as day, homie. You know? Uh, no. Yeah, man. So it's cats like him that I, I admired, man, and looked up to, you know? Yeah. And it was always sharp. Always sharp, man. You know? Yeah, man. Hey, you have, a clip of you, you have a clip of you getting down that I think is so cold, and you call it having fun at Trinity till infinity. Oh, really? Yeah, you don't, you don't recall that title? I do, I remember it. 
in this video, you, 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 you're robotic, boom, bam, you, you're robotic, but then you start doing what I call like a tick walk to the, but you're going to the, oh, but, yes, but you're going to the side. Yes, oh man, man I yes. love that clip so much, man. Just talk to me about that clip, homie. Huh? Come on, talk to me. Talk to me about that. Um, I, I had to judge a competition out there. It was in uh, it was in Connecticut at um, at Trinity College, and um, really good event too, man. It was dope. And um, they just started playing some music where cats just get down and just have some fun. So me and Buddha Stretch was in the uh, the cipher. It was in the circle getting busy, and um, that particular song was like. So I was thinking, how can I interpret this music with a robotic movement? So I just kept it like going sideways. And um, I kind of like that clip sometimes myself. It's dope. I ain't going to lie. It's dope. I like it sometimes. But like, I, I like... Uh, I like a bunch of shit that y'all do, man. Like, there's one, yo, I'm gonna tell you something too, man. You pop, you and my boy Dre Money pop exactly the same. Dre Money? Yeah, yeah, he's locked up right now, but. But where's he from? He's from Boston. That's interesting. Yo, listen, if I could show you an old clip, of, he don't dance no more now, he's a bodybuilder now, but if, uh, if I could show you an old clip of him dancing, you'd be like, God damn, that's me. Mm. Yeah. The same look, like the faces you make, and like with him dancing, I'm like, damn, motherfuckers should have been brothers. No shit. Yo. Yeah, man. Hey, well, shout yeah. out to Dre Money. Shout out to Dre Money. I'm a bodybuilder too, homie. I'm <laughs> 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 we both got a lot, we got a lot in common. Shit. That's my man. That's my man. Yeah. Money, man. I miss him, dog. Right he on. He should be man. home in like about five, six years, though. You Megatron, know? what's your favorite song to bust to, man? Woo! I'm a, I'm a old school head. I love Cameo. I love, uh, yo, this one joint that you danced to from uh, Renee and Angela was my joint, man. Is that right? I love you, bro. That you know, I was like, "Oh, he's crushing that." Okay, so you pay attention to me a little bit, huh? I do, man. Yo, listen, man. You you don't understand, man. Like, as an OG, my job is to see what everybody's love and passion for this dance is, and also to congratulate when they're doing something very good, man. Like, I'm not just. It's not just about me, man. It's about everybody. Like all the cats we're talking about tonight, including yourself, yo, listen, even the ones that passed away, because there's some killers that you guys had out there, man, some killers. And it hurt me when they passed. Um, but those songs are very heartfelt because it's soulful. You know what I'm saying? I could dig all these songs that these cats be coming up with. I could, I could rock to that stuff. That's not... But to get deep into real pop locking and popping style and essences and stuff like that, you got to have some soul to flow with, man. You have to. And those songs, that, that had, they have soul. You know what I mean? So if you can't, if you can't find it within yourself to find that, that flow and that soulfulness, 
I gotta tell you, you're not, you're not, you're not really popping to me. Mm. You're not like, like when I watch you, I'm like, you feeling it. When I watch a lot of these cats like Dre and Scorpio and uh, Sensei Bob and all these guys, they're feeling this shit. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're moving. They're rocking. There's a lot of cats here in Boston that's doing the same thing. They're feeling it. They're rocking. But the thing is, you have to live that shit, man. And there's a lot of cats nowadays that don't really live it the way we lived it. And when you try to give them that jewel, they don't want to listen. And you just got to like, okay, yo, do you, man. You know, that's why I created Pop Lock Talk, man. Uh, for one, and I tell, I share this story all the time. I give the props, and this is going to trip you up. I give the props to Fat Joe, the rapper. Mm. I was watching him. He has a podcast. And on his podcast, yeah. he interviews all the rappers that are in the hip hop industry. If something is yeah. going on, he gets on his show and he talks about whatever event that's cracking. Most of the time, yeah. back then when I first found out about him, back then it was about the verses. So he was always talking about this rapper versus this rapper. And I said, man, why we don't have nothing like that? We don't have an industry. We don't have an industry. So to me, Pop Lock Talk is creating an industry now. That's beautiful, man. You get what I'm saying? We're, whoever's yeah. on this show, you're in the industry. You get, right. you, you feel That's it? Beautiful, man. It's a pop yeah. lock industry now. And not only that, pop lock talk may not be so valuable right now. It is though. But I'm designing it to be like an encyclopedia. So whenever somebody 10 years from now needs some information, it could be about you. Well, who was on the East Coast getting down? And they'll go and they'll find Megatron. They'll find Billy and Bob. And see, now Pop Lock Talk is an it's a dictionary. Yeah, no doubt. That's so, smart, man. So the reason why I'm doing it, I don't care if I'm interviewing someone that I really don't give a damn about, but I'll respect you if you're relevant to this dance and I'll interview you. With right. with, right. A, with with without an attitude. You know what I'm saying? Not to say right. I, I think you're a cool dude, you got great vibes. But you know, you know, one day, man, my father was watching the Lakers and the Celtics. They was yeah. balling. And he was talking shit about Boston Celtics. I know that's where y'all from. <laughs> and see, I'm, I'm from the 70s and 80s when I was a little kid watching TV with my dad. And he was talking about Larry Bird. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. We dissing the hell out the Celtics, but we still have to respect. He said, you see that white boy right there? He bad in the motherfucker. He said, he, he said, he bad in the, he said, I don't give a fuck what we say, but we can't take the credit away from him. And so I still have that mentality. No matter if I got beef with someone or had beef back in the day with somebody, I'm still going right. to bring, I'm going to respect your skill level and still bring you on Pop Lock Talk and interview you. See what you just said, man. That, that right there tells me a lot about you, man, because it's not about you and your shit. It's about, I want to put this motherfucker on here because I respect his skill set and what he's doing. And I could personally not like this motherfucker, but I'm going to bring him on here and we're going to kick the Willie Bobo. We're going to talk it out and kick it. And guess what? You may have a newfound respect for this motherfucker somewhere, but the point is, you you didn't like discriminate his ass and be like, "Fuck that," because it ain't about me. It ain't. Yeah. It's not for me. It's for the love of the dance. Yeah. It's for pop. Absolutely, brother. It's for pop life, yeah. and that's who I'm doing it for. You know, and that's a beautiful. Thing. See, that's what I mean, man. And I like that. I, I like the idea how you. How you setting this up as an encyclopedia where people can go to it for references. People can say, yo, who was this dude? Who was this chick? Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad chicks out there too, man. That can get down. You oh, know? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I miss the baddest. 
I missed her by this much that the, from L.A. that we would consider the baddest. Her name was Tangerine. We had been hitting each other oh, back and duh. forth, back and I forth. We kept missing each other's calls, and next thing you know, she passed away. I was, I, my heart dropped. Bro, I got a chance to see her get down myself. I got lucky because I used to come back. I used to come out to Cali all the time back in the eighties. You got to share that story right now. Tell me what did you see? <laughs> what did you see with Tangerine? I'm gonna say this right now. Um, it was kind of crazy. I went to uh, this club a long time ago called the Palace and the Palladium back then. The Palladium, Hollywood. And vicious. Listen, we ain't gonna talk. So, um, I happened to be there, and Boogaloo Shrimp was there, Taco was there. And I didn't know who she was until she came in and she hugged both of them. So I was dressed in some like, you know, some pimp gear back then. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? The 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 rayon slacks and the rayon shirt, you know what I'm saying, with the with the with, with the loafers, you know what I mean? No socks, just chilling. Yeah. But the music was bumping in the palladium that day. And Taco was just going crazy. I'm like, oh, he had his hair was down in like Booyah Tribe blade, uh, braids at the time. And Boogaloo Shrimp was sitting up on the stage. I know you know how they have a stage, they had a stage in there. He was sitting on the stage with this chick. And uh, I was just, just doing some basic hitting and shit. And he, he comes over, he left the chick, came over and said, Yo, big dog, man. You be you be you be banging it, you be doing it? I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, man, come meet my man Taco. I had already met Taco before. So we all kicked it for a minute. So when she came in and she hugged them, she went right to bang, bang, bang. I was like, God damn. Man, and listen, man, seeing a woman hit that hard, man. It's crazy. Crazy. I'm sitting here like, who the hell is this? Yo, she's nasty. So she just messed around with them for a minute. You know, I said, hey, how you doing? I'm Megatron. She's oh, hi, how you doing? She didn't say her name, though. She didn't say it. She's oh, hi, how you doing? And so I asked uh, Shrimp, and I said, yo, who was that? He said, yo, that was Tangerine, man. I said, Damn. Yo, listen. Hitting, nailing, banging. I've never seen no one that, like, like a, a woman that fierce, man. I was this close, man. Uh, she had became a pastor. And uh, yeah. I never was close with her or friends with her like that. So I was communicating with her through uh, a cat from the Unique Dominoes named, um, 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 uh, can't call his name right now. Not Diesel. Not Diesel, but the other one. Uh, yeah, I remember all the I remember all them cats, but man. Shout out to the to the unique dominoes, man. But uh she would call me and I would be busy. I would call her and she would be busy. And, and that game kept playing back and forth, back and forth. Just keep missing. And um uh, next thing you know, she passed away. So you mentioned Taco's name and Tangerine. Let's give them both five seconds of Pop Lock Love, man. Absolutely. Pop Lock Love to them both. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, man. It's kind of funny. You guys have a unique Domino's in um, in Cali, and we had a unique Domino's here in Boston. Too. Really? Yeah, but they were but they were a B-Boy crew, though. Mm. They, were, they were breakers. And they had, like, two poppers in that crew. Yeah. Uh, one, his name was Wyatt Jackson. Um, his B-boy, his, his popping name was Look because he had really big eyes, you know what I'm saying? So when he pops, he's like, ah. Like, like, <laughs> like, and he was like, he was tall too, so he was like maybe 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, yeah. And then um, his partner, um, my, my man, his name is Joey, but his uh, popping name was uh, Puppet One. Puppet One. 
Yeah, man, he was, he was nice. He he, uh, he came my slaughterhouse recently, man, and, and we kicked it, man, and brought up some old school battles and times that we had, you know, because it used to be Floor Lords versus their crew, you know what I'm saying? So me and, me and my man, Shallow and uh, Dre, we used to have to battle their poppers and stuff like that. And it was always it was always a, a good get down, you know what I mean? Dudes would be battling for hours, man, so it was always good get downs back then. Right on, right on, man. You never uh, done a routine with uh, Billy and Bobby? Yeah. Um, later on in the years, um, probably 2000, I would say like maybe like 2006, me, Billy and Bobby and Shallow, we got together and um, we we created this, this group, so to speak, called the Fantastic Four. And um, we would do some shows around Boston and do some shows, you know, like in schools and stuff like that. And represent it, you know what I'm saying, for the popping scene. Earlier you mentioned that you guys would be in ciphers, you know, when you guys was younger and you were getting down. Was any of yeah. the members from New Edition in that cipher? Ah. If anyone would be in that cipher, it would Definitely be uh, Bobby Brown. Bobby. Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown would battle anybody. You know what? We got to get Bobby on Pop Lock Talk. He I'm loves popping, man. A lot of R and B. A lot of R and B artists. Like I got the the lead singer from Troop. You remember the group Troop? Of course, Alan. Yeah, they they. I got one. Of the lead singer. He he's on Pop Lock Talk. I think it was Alan and John John. No, uh, was it Alan and John? But I know Troop very well. Yeah, yeah. Troop. Um, going back to the unique dominoes, the person that who was connecting me with uh, Tangerine was Fantasy. Oh, Fantasy! Yeah, his yes. name was Fantasy. Yeah, big shout out I to Fantasy. Fantasy. I appreciate that. I had to give him his props on that. And the cat, the lead singer from Troop, was Stephen Russell. Yeah. Stephen Russell. Yes. Yeah. So he been on here. So we got to get Bobby on here. And have him tell his side of the story of Pop Lock Talk. Because Billy and Bobby been around him too. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. he pops, man. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he was he's he, I'll put it this way. The projects that um that Bobby Brown come from, uh listen, you had to pop. You had to be a, you had to be a nasty popper out of the projects. And um he was one of them. But he was he wasn't like a battler, but he would get in a cipher though. He mm -hmm. would get in a cipher and get down, and then get out the way. Yeah, you know okay. what I mean. <laughs> okay. But he knows he knows the rules though. You get called yeah. out. Yeah. You gotta stay there. Yeah, yeah. Hey man, I want to ask you something deep. What's up, man? What's one thing that you would like to share with the world that you would like people to know about yourself? Well. I have some good and bad, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not perfect, never been perfect, but, you know, um, I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but I've been to prison, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Uh, I was locked up for 10 and a half years, you know what I mean? I was gone for a while. And um, it was a, it was a, a crazy experience, though, you know what I'm saying, where... Um, the respect of who you are as a person is what gets you through. You know what I'm saying? You have to have a lot of integrity, which I have. Respectability, which I had. Um, I was well respected, you know what I'm saying? Regardless of whatever I was into, you know what I mean? So it's, uh, there's nothing that I'm proud of, but at the same time, it is what happened to me. So a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, whether they pass judgment or whatever the case may be, that's, that's who I am. I did that, and I'm back. I'm here to basically, you know, set the record straight. You know what I'm saying? This is this is my passion. This is my love. This is what I do. I give out lessons. I teach. Um, I work with the youth so that they don't go down the same path I went. I try to make sure that... Uh, um, when I'm teaching somebody something, I want them to be the best that they can be at it. Whether it's popping, 
whether it's theatrics, theatrical things, or whatever the case may be, I'm there to support. Right on. Um, right. So I mentioned a lot of pops as one of my students has been that's been in there since seven years old. Um, currently, right now at Slaughterhouse, it's like ninety percent women. You know what I'm saying? Really? And yeah, man. That's 90. amazing. Right on. Probably like probably two guys show up once in a while. They want to get out, huh? The girls want to bust. That's mostly all. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, man, and I, and you know what I'm saying, and I love that because yeah. it shows me that women have a fierceness. You know what I'm saying? See, yeah. that's what I'm talking about with the tangerine thing. I've never seen a woman that bangs like that and get busy like that so much. This is what I try to train them to be like, to have her ferocity in their blood. Yeah. I try to make sure that they have a lot of smoothness like, um, like Medusa. You know what I'm saying? Mm. She's cold. Yeah. <laughs> Stop it! And um, I try to, I try to make sure that they have these people flowing through them when they're dancing. Right on. Because as a woman, as a woman, I want them to also not just be able to be hit hard like a man, but I want them to be able to have that femininity, you know, that they still have. Stay a woman. As a woman, yeah. the sexiness, yes. Stay a woman, yeah. You know what I mean? So, man. Yeah, man. I like that. I that like negative, that. like I said, that negative of when I went away, my positive and my, you know, shining moment is coming back and restarting Slaughterhouse and putting Slaughterhouse back together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where, where I always, where I always feel as though a lot of these kids, man, they just need proper guidance. And it's up to us OGs to make sure that they get it. You know what I'm saying? We have to say. We are responsible. We are responsible, my dude. Absolutely. It's our fault if they fuck up. It's our fault. We got to make sure. We got to be, hey, hey, hey. Don't do that bum ass shit no more. Don't do that shit. Nah. Nah, fuck that. You know, we had, shit, we, had, we had great leaders, man, when we were younger. Yes, man. That's we have to, to we say. have to give them. You said something earlier, man, that a lot of kids don't have today, and that's integrity. Yeah, man, gotta have it. It's a must. And you know, we had great leaders, man, and we need to be we need to be set that same example that was given to bro, us. You know, bro. Listen, man, I, I'll tell you something, cool. I watch I watch how you and all your all your people, man, how y'all carry yourselves with these kids, man. You guys put it in a really good perspective, man. And it's like, you know, you teach them how to use their hands. You know what I'm saying? You teach them how to be able to take a punch as well as give one out. You teach them how to like, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, man, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? The people that taught you, you paved in the way. See, that's, that's, there's not a lot of cats that want to be leaders like that. Right, no. You know what I'm saying? It takes a lot to put this shit on your back. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every week, I'm in Slaughterhouse going like this here. Let's go. Do this. Get this done. Hey, hey, hey. Stop fucking around. Stop playing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You you genuinely care, man. And you love. Lo love is the, is the word for all of it. That sums it up. Love is everything, homie. Absolutely, you know? man. And, and I watch you guys do it every week, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of the I genuinely, I, I said, genuinely care for kids. You know, before I was training at my own gym, I was training at another gym, and that's what made me go open up minds. The owner of that gym, he wasn't friendly and didn't have no love for the kids at all. At all. Mm. Zero percent. Yeah. And when I noticed that, I said, I can't work with this dude. Yeah. I said, I'm gone. I'm finna go open up my own spot and run things how I want to run and cater to these children like they should be. And they're going to love you forever for that, man. All dude saw was cha-ching. You know, all he saw yeah. was the dollar sign when he looked at them. I actually stopped, talked to these kids about their parents. Some of them have uh, just single moms. The mothers come to me yeah. sometimes in tears. 
He's 15. I don't know what to do with him. I can't handle him. Okay, I got your back, man. Well, I know what to do with him. Yep. Just bring him here. See, drop him off for two hours. Yeah. Responsibility as an OG. Yeah. Like, you put that. You put that responsibility on your back to help her, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's like that's like my mother walking down the street with all these groceries, and you come over and be like, "Hey, hey, hey let me help you with this, ma'am. Come on." You see what I'm saying? Right. The respect level is high. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you don't take responsibility, you know what I'm saying? And you sit there and you watch my mother struggle and this like that, I'm going to be bitter. Yeah. I'm going to be like, yo, dog, you help my mother? No man. I put fucking hands up. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like that, man. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, Megatron. We've had some a deep conversation, and I'm loving it, man. And we can go on all night with me and you because I can see your mentality. And uh, yeah. it's equivalent to mine, man. But uh, I want to have some fun with you right now. Huh? What's up, dog? I want to ask you some questions. And I just want man. you to choose one when I ask you these questions. I got you. You ready? Yeah. Taco? Tacos? Or a juicy ass cheeseburger. Oh, I gotta have a juicy ass cheeseburger. <laughs> okay, okay. You had a juicy ass cheeseburger. California or New York? Ooh, shit, that's a tough one, boy. I love both of y'all. Come on. Ah. Come on. Ah. I'm gonna have to ride with New York. Oh, oh shit! I'm gonna call Scorpio and tell him to get you when you see. Him. <laughs> I'm calling Scorpio right now. Scorpio, you tear his ass up when you see him. He chose New York, Scorpio. <laughs> <laughs> you crazy, homie? <laughs> hey, you crazy, shit. make a try. Um, so then I already know what you gonna say on this one. Ice Cube or Jay Z? Oh, wait a minute, old nigga. I love some ice cube, though. <laughs> he said, don't get it twisted. Hold up, man. That's my dude, man. Okay, and well, yo, we'll pick what? I'm going to tell you a lot of stuff that I like about about ice cube, though. Talk to me. He He's, he's his entrepreneurship skills are hood-based to me. Like the three versus three basketball tournaments. That's hood shit to me, man. Like Rucker Park shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but you know what? I understand your perspective on that and I get what you're saying. But evolving. Things evolve. Things there's no. the NBA is not gonna be forever. NFL is not one can you believe one it may not be while we're alive, but one day these leagues are gonna be gone. I know that. And it's going to be something different. And so right now, the way you're looking at that might be like that, but it might end up being the next thing like to be in the NBA. See, see, hear me out. What I meant by his entrepreneurship is like hood-based. Yeah. That is what I like, though. Mm -hmm. Like, I like the fact that he's grabbing three players from a team and saying, this is my... This is my mob going against that mob and that mob and that mob. Because that's like battling. To and me. they throwbacks. They, they, the dudes from back in the day. Yeah. They, yeah. They're I not love. playing no more, but they can still get out. Absolutely. Like OG stuff. We may not we may not go out and battle all the time, but we still can. Though. Yeah. A matter of fact, I think they're giving him some trouble behind that, man. I think they're yeah, giving him Yeah, I heard. Yeah. So, but... You didn't pick one, Cube or Jay Z? Oh, Cube. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm a man. Okay. This might be a tough one for you, but it ain't a tough one for me. I I got my answer, but okay. I'm not gonna tell you. You might be surprised with mine, though. I'm not gonna tell you my answer until I hear yours. Vanity okay. or Beyonce? Say that again. Vanity or Beyonce? I'm going with vanity. You know why? Tell me why. I'm going to give you my reason why. That's old school fine. That, that, that fine. <laughs>
line is like timeless. <laughs> that that fine list that she got is like timeless. If you were to go see her right now, she'd be bad as hell, probably. But you know what's messed Still. up? You know what's messed up about that man? Because I choose vanity too. I'm with you, and I'm with the old school. Because I love the feather. The feather is the coldest motherfucking hairstyle a woman can wear. But period. Here's the deal. Beyonce is way more talented. Oh, of course, absolutely. You know, matter of fact, is there a woman on earth uh, bigger than Beyonce right now? I'm gonna have to say no. I don't think there's no one bigger. Erica Badu ain't touching her. Uh, Mary J. Blige ain't touching her. No. Yeah. No. Because those will be the next two in line, right? Yeah, no question. Janet Jackson, and that's old school, and she can't touch him. She can't touch him. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. Mm. It's tough. You got some more? Good Times or The Cosby Show? Oh, man, I need good times, man. <laughs> I need good times. Good I'm going to break that down for you, too. You didn't like Theo? Uh, you didn't like Theo? The finest black chick I ever saw in my life. Who? Thelma, the sister. Oh. The finest black chick I ever saw Hey, she still look good till today. Hey. Hey, man. Like Deontay Wilder say, till this day. <laughs> 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 till this day. <laughs> Yo, listen. That don't make no sense. Yeah. Now, see, that's timeless fine, this man. That's timeless. She's still fine from the 70s, dog. You know, She's pushing on, 70. Man. You know how hard it is to keep that? Quit playing with me, man. man. Hey, hey. Thelma, hey, you going to be fine. Oh, look, let's talk to her. Thelma, you going to be fine your whole life. <laughs> you gonna... I wish I could have told her back in the 70s, you're going to be fine forever. You know forever. that, Forever. Right? Yeah. I mean, some women, they lose it. Like, Jasmine Guy was fine. But, man, Jasmine, like, ew, bam. But Thelma? Yo, I, I used to think she was a bad chick, though, Jasmine Guy. Yeah. She she got it like she turned forty and shit went hard or something. I don't know what happened. Shit, uh, Jada Pinkett's doing the same shit. Ooh. you better watch out. You better you better duck. <laughs> you better duck. Hey. Will Hand will come from out of nowhere. Will Hand will come. What you say about my Jada? <laughs> 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 hey, hey, Chris Rock did some. Chris Rock did the most busterish shit a man can do on TV. You can't sit there and get smacked on TV like that. Hey, and Chris Rock, and Chris Rock said, "He, wow, well, well, Will Smith, Will Smith just slapped the shit out of me. No shit, stupid." <laughs> Man. I'm plowing your ass right now, for sure. Hey, you would have seen me and Will. We would have been all on the ground rustling and tumbling and turning over. The cameras would have, you would have seen me and Will. As soon as you would have slapped me, I would have turned into Niggatron. <laughs> Niggatron. <laughs> Man. Immediately. Woo. I'm not playing. You're not, you're not going to get away with slapping nah, me. No, nah. no. There, hey, there's professionalism. And then there's respect. He crossed both of those lines. Hey, you think it he was? You think it was him, staged on me? Was you think it was staged? I don't give a fuck. You ain't, I'm not letting you slap. Me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what if you get five million dollars off of it though? We don't know how much money they making off of that shit. You know how much okay, views? Watch, you know how much hey, views they got off of that shit on YouTube and shit. Hey, 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 cool boy, let me ask you this. Me and you, let's say we're at the Papa's picnic, right? And I walk up and I slap the fuck out of you, right? Now we're amongst our goddamn peers, bro. I slap the shit out you and you don't do nothing. No. Nah. <laughs> it, for that to happen, homie, it would have to be staged. If I knew I was yeah, getting five million dollars, oh yeah, oh, oh five million, okay, nigga, come slap the fuck out of me. I'm gonna fall. I'm gonna roll, nigga. I might, <laughs> I might purposely lose a tooth. I'm gonna do something, nigga. I'm gonna spit blood. I'm gonna act it all out. If I know it's that, I'm gonna do it. But if I don't know if there's no money involved, oh hell no. Nah. 
Hell no, nah. we <laughs> we finna get out, homie. We finna. Hey, gonna... <laughs> yo, hey, yo, how y'all saying? We can chunk them. We gonna chunk them. Man. <laughs> I'm a fucking man right here. Hey, Michael, this Michael moment, Jackson man. or Prince? What's up? Michael Jackson or Prince? I gotta go with MJ, man. There you go. Yo, listen, that's the coldest black dude dancing, creating. The music is just anything he plays. It's it's like classic. It could be one of the wackest songs he ever done. It's a classic. No if ands or buts about it. Prince, you might have to skip a couple of songs that you don't want to hear it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then, then he got some cold shit too, though. But for the most part, I can listen to every album, every song that Mike ever done. That's deep. I can. <clears throat> I like the Prince, man, when um, Head was out. That is old school 70s Prince. That's the Prince 80s I like. like. When he had the power of land. Till you get enough hair. Yeah. Hey, can you believe Prince? Can you believe Prince felt Michael Jackson was a was was a square? He looked at Mike like Mike, I ain't Mike's too square for me. Damn. Yeah. Cause Mike wanted to work with Prince. Yeah, I remember they tried to do something one time and they never did it. Mike used to show Prince love. Mike brought Prince out on, called Prince out. James Brown said, Mike, come up here. Mike came down, got down with James Brown. And then Mike turned around to James and said, hey, this is nobody really knew who Prince was. And said, yeah. I got a homie that's, that's doing his thing. Prince, come down here. And Prince came down and got down. But Prince would, never, Prince would never show Mike that kind of love. No. Cause they ended up being they ended up being like Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson. They ended up being who's the biggest star, you know, at that time. See, I didn't like that. Like like, you know, someone's always putting two black people against each other, man. I'm not gonna go down this political black soapbox, but Yeah. Damn. Come on, man. We gotta show each other love no matter what it is. Cat Williams or Bernie Mac? You look like a Bernie Mac type of dude. I am. I am. <laughs> but I do like Cat Williams because he's stupid as shit. <laughs> so who, that man will store up, store up everything he got. So you, so you going with it's Bernie Mac? Funny. Bernie Mac. Yeah, we rock with Bernie Mac. All yeah. right. Um, would you rather be playing golf with some tycoons out there talking business? I feed the homeless. Ah, I like that, brother. I'm going to have to feed the homeless, but I will do this, though. Can I talk to the tycoons about feeding the homeless? There you go. You know there you saying? go. I was just seeing if that's where your mindset would go. I would go, oh, I would go kick it with the tycoons, get the money, and then go feed the homeless. There you go. Absolutely. I'm a real motherfucker, though, man. Listen, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. Listen, give me the money. I'm going to make sure my people are fucking burping, dog, for real. No, no. Give it to me. I'm going to show you how to spend it right. You know what I mean? There's a lot of cats that just want the money for self or fuck the homeless. They should have been doing what I was doing, whatever you want to say. I'm on some, look, man, stop playing with me right now. Yeah. Hey, Megatron, what up, homie? we coming to a closing, homie. I yes, sir. appreciate your time and consideration. Come yeah. on, man. Yo, cool, man. This this has been well, long overdue, man. You know, we tried to do it before with me and Shallow. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work out. No big deal. You know what I mean? You reached out to me, man, and said, yo, Megatron, come on, man. Still come on here. Man, listen, I've been dying to get on here, man. You know why? Because... Real recognize real, man. I see the type of person you are, you know what I'm saying? And hopefully right now you know who I am. You know what I mean? I'm the same cat. 
when I come out to Cali, man, you know what I mean? I'll reach out. That's the type of dude Pull I am. Pull up. You know come come hang with me. I'll come down there. here to the dance studio. Let's get down. Let's get out, man. Come Absolutely. Out. Yeah. Oh, real quick before you jet. Hey, man. Have me come out and judge next time, man. You throw one of your joints out there, man. I got you. I'll come out there. I got you. I'm going to hold I'll you to that. There, bro. I'm going to hold you to that. Look, I check seen, this out. I seen, I, seen, I, seen how you, <clears throat> I seen how you work with the youth like that, man. That That's, come on. Right on. I love that stuff, man. And vice versa. I'll you know come out man? there. Absolutely, I got you, my dude. I just can't Listen. come when it's cold, homie. My, I'm getting too old. My bones, I my bones are getting cold. <laughs> cold bones hurt. Hey, listen, that's why they call you cool boy. You're like... <laughs> <laughs> like Dr. Freeze. Didn't y'all have Dr. Freeze in, 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 in Boston? I saw man, a dude. It was terrible. <laughs> it was cold today, shit. Hey. Before you go, man, you gotta day, you gotta catch this wave and throw it back, homie. I'm gonna throw you this wave. I'm gonna throw you this wave, homie. You ready? Let me get it. Yeah. Bow. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Hey, yo, man. We gotta get down, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. Hey, yo. I, I love another thing too, man. Your, your, your boy Decoy be going off too, man. Oh, that's the young homie. That's like my little brother now, man. Decoy, yeah. No question. I, I lost. Seeing it. The way I feel is I lost one armed bandit who was my mentor, my big homie, my dog, my yeah. everything. And when I lost him, I gained Decoy. So that's what, good. What, I, what one armed bandit was to me, I am to, back, to, to Decoy. That's, see that? See how the universe works, man? Yeah. It works in a strange way, but it also works in a good way, man. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a long time ago, I came out to Cali, and I was on Party Machine a long time ago, and um, there was a cat named one Arm Bandit back then. No, he just called himself Bandit okay. at the time, and he was popping, but he was doing like a lot of floor stuff. I don't know if it was the same dude, but... He was cold, though. Right on. Might have been him, man. Yeah. Hey, Megatron, appreciate you, homie. Yo. Pop Lock Love. Much love. Booyah. I appreciate you, homie. Oh, yeah. That's what we do. That's <laughs> what we do, man. Send it back, baby. Send it back. Ah. Pop Lock. Oh, who the hell she was?